हेलो वेलकम टू लेट्स लर्न आई एम सलमान वाडकर एंड आई विल बी टेकिंग मॉक इंटरव्यू ऑफ अमान खतीब हु हैज अप्लाइड फॉर सिम्स सो लेट स्टार्ट ओके अमान इंट्रोड्यूस योर सेल्फ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक यू सर फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इंट्रोड्यूस माय सेल्फ माय नेम इज अमान हसन खतीब एंड आई एम वन एंड ब्रॉट अप इन रत्नागिरी महाराष्ट्र I have done my schooling from Ratnagiri itself, and I scored 77 percentage in my SSC. Then I completed a diploma in mechanical engineering uh, with an aggregate of 90 percentage. Then I completed graduation in mechanical engineering uh, with an aggregate of 9.15 CGPA, which is around uh, 82 percentage. Uh, coming to my family background, uh, we are total six in the family. And my father work is working in Saudi Arabia on sugar plants, and uh, my mother is a housewife. I have one younger brother who is currently in 11th standard, and I have one uh, sister. So basically, me and my sister we both are twins, and I have one grandmother. So that's all about my family. And uh, my uh, interests and hobbies includes I like solo traveling, and I like to explore new places and uh, learn about their culture. And I like to work on machineries, and I am very good at sketching. and also i am uh, i love cooking as well so that's all about me okay good introduction just uh, one i think so one cross question might come sometimes it may, i may ask that that you have said that your father works in a chiller plant so interviewer might yeah. ask that what is a chiller okay so yeah. do you know yeah yeah chiller is um, it is a uh, basically it is a refrigeration cycle in in which the refrigerant directly doesn't take part in the in which the refrigerant directly doesn't take part in the refrigeration system uh, it is first cooled by primary refrigerant and then this uh, refrigerant is used for cooling purpose and it by uh, this uh, it passes through the chiller and it cools the uh, room basically okay why do you want to join merchant navy so i want to join merchant navy because uh, i was very passionate about this field since my childhood uh, because uh, this field offers a unique combination of challenges opportunities and uh, global experience that totally resonates with me and uh, from my early age only i have been captivated by the vastness of the oceans and the opportunities they hold so merchant navy provides this opportunity to convert my passion into profession and secondly i like to take challenges in my life so on board ship every day will be a new challenge for me and uh, the prospects of working at sea with diverse situation and continuous learning uh, resonates with my interests and goals and secondly i want to become financially stable and i want to be a good lifestyle to my family and uh, i am looking forward to be a successful chief engineer in future that's it. that's why i want to join merchant okay you told that you uh, like to face challenges so can yeah. you tell me about uh, some recent challenges that you had uh, faced and how did you tackle it so uh, basically uh, till my ssc i was a very average student uh, i was i scored only 77 percentage in my ssc so because of that i didn't got admission in uh, 12 Uh, since I was, I was wanting to go for the twelfth, uh, but uh, there was only one college in our in my city, and uh, due to my less marks, I didn't got admission there. Then I switched to diploma. So the basically that college was a government college, and the facilities were not much good. Means uh, I faced many challenges like uh, the, te- the teaching teaching was not good and. I I faced many difficulties the, the, you know, while pursuing the diploma course, but I I started from so when I joined diploma I uh, I realized where, where I am lacking and I started self studying and uh, uh, yeah in my uh, means uh, there were six semesters so in each semester I was. Uh, trying to upgrade myself to uh, means uh, first i was uh, in the top 10 then i started to when i feel that i like to i want to be uh, 
I want to score more my good marks. So uh, like that, I till my six uh, till my final semester, I came in top two uh, and I scored ninety percentage. So uh, basically, I just started uh, that all happened uh, because of my self study, and uh, the only fear I was having was that uh, to get the admission in uh, B mechanical because there was only one college. In my city only for like uh, B Bachelor of Engineering and uh, the cutoff were very high, so I was very much uh, I was very much scared that uh, will I get admission or not. So so that was also the reason uh, that uh, I focused more uh, during my diploma and uh, so the, then finally I got selected in B Tech um, in uh, okay. for uh, mechanical engineering and. Uh, Yeah, in that also I scored good because okay. uh, yeah, that's all. Okay, so one I find feedback that I will give, and the answer okay. was too long. You sh- yeah. should take, you should keep it thoda little small, like within one minute or one one and a half minute, you should be able to finish it. Okay. Uh, okay. Then um, then don't don't say that uh, you you are very fearful, very fearful, very fearful. that sends a negative message and uh, other point is uh, don't say that you had only one college in your city so you wanted to go over there just because it was in your city okay because no, i feel i i could i i could cross question you on this that uh, why do you want to st- study in your city only okay i like that and now you will be joining in merchant navy so here you will be away from home so are you homesick or something like that okay no no uh, only this, this was not the only reason that uh, that college is near to my home mm-hmm. uh, the, the placement was also yeah, yeah, yeah. these uh, points you say that it is good it the faculty is good yeah these points you say yeah. only one college in my city then it sends a message that you are homesick you want to stay near home so that kind of message it sends okay okay What is your uh, height in uh, centimeter? One seventy centimeter. Okay. And what is it in kilometer? It's zero point zero zero one seven zero. Okay. Kilometers. Hmm. That about ten raised to minus five. Okay. Yeah. Then India is surrounded by which uh, uh, water bodies? So on the Uh, west of the india it is surrounded by arabian sea and to the uh, east of india it is surrounded by uh, bay of bengal and to the south of india it is surrounded by indian ocean okay who is the vice president of india jagdeep uh, dhankar and who is the president uh, draupadi murmu who is the transport minister of india nitin gadkari i think then uh, can you tell me five uh, south american countries with their capitals with uh, capital i don't know but i know the countries okay go ahead It's Argentina, Boli- uh, Bolivia, Brazil, Peru, and Colombia. Okay. Okay. Bolivia, I don't know. But Bolivia is also there. Okay. Yes. So just uh, all the continents now, all the seven continents, you know at least five five countries and their capitals also because some of the P- uh, to some of the candidates they had asked uh, um, capital also. Okay. So. F- from each of the continents you know five countries and their capital as well okay okay i've sent you that pdf na in that in gk pdf in that yeah, I, yes, ha- i had i had made a list of everything so you can refer that okay, okay. Uh, what is the difference between republic day and independence day so independence uh, day is celebrated on the 15th of uh, august and independence day uh, Uh, resembles the uh, country's freedom uh, from the colonial or the foreign rule, 
and uh, Republic Day is celebrated on the 26th of January. And uh, uh, Republic Day uh, uh, celebrates the adoption of a new constitution and uh, the. Uh, ah, by two points are enough. Right. Two points yeah. are enough. And uh, one more question. Uh, who hoisted the flag on Independence Day? I don't have any idea. I'll find it. Okay. So on Independence Day, the Prime Minister hoists the flag, and on Republic Day, uh, yeah, this one, um, a President hoists the flag. Okay. Uh, president of India. Ah, president of India. Prime Minister hoists the flag at Red Fort on Independence Day and on Republic Day, uh, this thing. Uh, on, uh, whoever is the President of India uh, okay. uh, at Rajpath. Rajpath. Okay. Then, uh, but, uh, they go in uh, much detail about no, no, they don't go in much detail. Basically, it's just current affairs. The independence day had gone just now only, na, like 20 no, days you back. You said no, you said no, that uh, in Red Fort, you, uh, you mentioned the location. Yeah, I, I, I just had the information, so I thought I should pass on. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I had studied my why, 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 while I was preparing, so I had noted these points, so I thought I should pass on. Okay. okay. Then, um, uh, what is the lander of uh, Chandrayaan 3 call? called? Called? I don't know. Okay. So, these are some current affairs. Nah? Like, uh, recently, some of the people who had appeared for interview, nah? so they were mm -hmm. asked, not about lander, but they were asked, who is the chairman of ISRO? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, little bit idea na you get about chandrayaan 3 mission okay because it is current affairs and they okay so basically these these current affairs some some current affairs like uh, you are from maharashtra only ratnagiri so then yeah. uh, so then you get little bit idea of that also what is happening currently in maharashtra okay they so what, might what, what is the answer for that uh, chandrayaan lander sorry you know? what was the answer for that uh, chandrayaan lander vikram vikram lander can you tell me some uh, states of uh, India other than Maharashtra and they are uh, with their chief ministers? So there is Goa uh, and uh, there is Karnataka, Kerala and Madhya Pradesh. Okay. And can you and tell Goa. me can you tell me some other chief ministers than other than Maharashtra? So, of Karnataka, uh, the Chief Minister is uh, Shri Siddharamaya, of Kerala, uh, Shri uh, Pinarai Vijaya, and of Madhya Pradesh, it is Shri Shivraj Singh Chavan, and of uh, Goa, it is Pramod uh, Savan. Pramod Savan, yeah. And uh, that's it. Uh, and Kerala it is, uh, no, I so uh, Kerala said about Kerala. Kerala. In the okay. hmm. What are, uh, what are the northeastern states? Uh, there is uh, Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Manipur, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Sikkim and Tripura. N northeastern states can there, uh, so there are seven northeastern states, okay. Sikkim is I not... Said eight. Ah, you said it. Okay. Sikkim, I think, is so yes. not considered in northeastern or something like that. Okay. Seven are okay. there. Okay. Yes. I Some. Ah, ah. And uh, sometimes, na, some like in my interview, na, my in my interview, I was asked, what are the states in the east? Okay. Like that, he had asked. Okay. So I got confused that he was asking exactly in the east. He was asking. So then I I okay. told Odisha and all, Odisha, West Bengal yeah. and all. So then he was like, no, no. Okay. Uh, then what what is uh, Mizoram and all? So, just clarify, is there east or northeastern okay. states, okay? So, I, I have to ask him whether northeast or uh, south. No, no, if he clearly says that northeastern states, then, then there is no doubt. But if he asks... No, no, if, 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 if he says only east, then I have to ask him uh, north Maybe you die, he, it is understood, he is asking for that northeastern states only. So, you can directly ask that, directly say, say that. 
he he is expecting anything else he is expecting okay name uh, name the oceans so there is at, uh, arctic ocean uh, north atlantic ocean south atlantic ocean north pacific ocean south pacific ocean indian ocean and southern ocean how many did you say seven eight eight can you repeat again uh, arctic ocean hmm. arctic ocean hmm. uh, north atlantic ocean hmm. south atlantic ocean hmm. uh, north pacific ocean hmm. south pacific hmm. ocean hmm. indian ocean and southern ocean hmm. how many number of states are there in india there are uh, 28 states okay. uh, types of fire extinguishers so water foam so dry powder co2 and wet chemicals hmm. okay dry, uh, dry powder is also called dcp dry chemical powder okay yeah yes I don't have to mention class A class B, no? No, 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 no. no. This is for just for information. No, this much is enough, more than enough. Okay. There is for just my, like I was studying, so I did. Okay. What classes of fire and all are there? Mm, can you tell me uh, five European countries? So, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and United Kingdom. Okay, now we'll move on to technical questions. What is Pascal's law? So Pascal's law states that in a confined space, when a uh, fluid is uh, uh, when a, in a past in a confined space, when when a fluid is compressed, it is uh, transmitted in all directions equally. Okay. Don't fumble and don't try to like exactly remember simple okay uh -huh, okay like uh, when pressure is applied uh, at one point uh, in a, yeah, on yeah. an incompressible on an incompressible liquid in a closed vessel it is equally trans uh, transferred in all directions simple okay. Okay. okay the moment you will fumble and try to remember na exact definition then he will catch you because he wants to just know that you want you know or not yeah, okay. And these are very simple questions they will ask only. Okay. The basic questions, these they ask only. And mostly they are interested in basic questions only. Okay. What is latent heat? Latent heat uh, is a heat uh, where the phase switch takes place from uh, the boiling point, that is uh, from 100 degrees Celsius to it's above 100 degrees Celsius and uh, the uh, temperature remains constant during this phase. Okay. Only phase change of don't you don't need to say 100 degrees Celsius because latent heat is for every substance. So 100 degrees Celsius okay. is for water. So and just say that latent heat is the amount of heat required for a for phase change without phase increasing the temperature for unit mass of substance. Okay. What is specific heat? So specific heat is the amount of heat uh, required to raise the temperature of unit mass of a substance through 1 degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin. And its, its unit is kilojoule per kg degree Celsius or kg Kelvin. Kilojoule per kg Kelvin. What is drilling? Drilling is the operation uh, which is used to produce holes on the walls or surfaces. What is density? Density is the ratio of mass upon volume and its unit is kg per meter cube. What is the density of water and petrol? Uh, density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube and uh, of petrol I don't have any idea. Okay, 750 kg per meter cube. 750? Yeah, around 750 kg per meter cube. Okay. And uh, diesel, it is around 850 kg per meter cube. Okay. 
what is uh, archimedes principle so archimedes principle states that when a body is fully or partially immersed in a liquid and a fourth force will act on it which is called as buoyant force and this force is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced what is flow rate flow rate it is the amount of fluid flowing per unit time and its unit is uh, meter cube per second okay okay you can say the volume of the fluid also amount or volume of the fluid because like it is meter cube na and through a cross section okay like that okay what is uh, yield stress ultimate stress yield stress is the stress in which uh, the uh, when we suppose we load the material uh, so suppose uh, if you are loading the material suppose 5 uh, 5 newton is the load and uh, uh, the load is constant in uh, after some time the material so uh, means the material starts to break irrespective of the increase in the its weight so yielding takes place with uh, irrespective of the uh, increasing of the load i think i don't know proper definition but i find you study that definition okay because okay. They, they have asked so there is chance that they will ask again what is yield stress what okay. is ultimate stress okay. yield stress okay. is the maximum stress that a material can withstand okay without undergoing permanent deformation okay. okay and ultimate stress is the maximum stress beyond which uh, even the without increase in stress uh, deformation takes place so okay. you just go go through one sir to read the song okay. i don't need to read everything just uh, the, at least first thing you should cover all the questions there those were that were asked in past okay and then okay. and tomorrow is your interview na don't take too much load don't think that i have missed that i have missed that jo pad liya hai ab pad liya hai zyada load aur zyada tension nahi lena hai theek hai okay okay kyunki kal kal ya parso hi hoga interview jitna zyada sochoge na ki ye nahi pada hu wo nahi pada hu ye baki hai wo baki hai to zyada stress aayega स्ट्रेस नहीं चाहिए अपने को कॉन्फिडेंस yes. रहने का इंटरव्यू के अंदर ज्यादा खाली पूरा कॉन्फिडेंस का ही सवाल है अभी तुमने जी आई एम एस वगैरह का इंटरव्यू दिया हो तुम्हारे को पता है कॉन्फिडेंस का ही खेल है पूरा टेल मी द लॉज ऑफ थर्मोडाइनेमिक्स सो देयर आर थ्री लॉज ऑफ थर्मोडाइनेमिक्स जीरोथ लॉ ऑफ थर्मोडाइनेमिक्स फर्स्ट लॉ एंड सेकंड लॉ सो जीरोथ लॉ स्टेट्स दैट इफ टू बॉडीज आर इन थर्मल इक्विलिब्रियम विद सम थर्ड बॉडी देन दे आर आल्सो इन थर्मल इक्विलिब्रियम विद ईच अदर First law of thermodynamics states that uh, uh, energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, but it can be transferred from one form to the another form. And uh, second law of thermodynamics is uh, uh, divided by two statements. First, uh, first is the Kelvin-Planck statement, and second is the Clausius statement. So Kelvin-Planck statement says that it is impossible to construct a heat engine working on cyclic process whose sole aim is to convert. heat energy supplied into equivalent amount of work it means uh, heat energy cannot fully convert heat supplied into mechanical work and second is the clausius statement it states that uh, it is impossible for a machine to transfer heat from low temperature body to high temperature body without subtract external work okay example uh, refrigerator okay and upar wagera dekh raha hu kai par kuch dekh ke to nahi bol raha na nahi nahi kyunki wale interview wagera dekhega to aisa kuch wo bolega isliye ठीक है ओके एंड थर्ड लॉ भी एक बार थोड़ा देख लेना थर्ड लॉ ऑफ थर्मोडाइनेमिक्स क्या है हो सकता है पूछे थर्ड लॉ ऑफ थर्मोडाइनेमिक्स क्या है ठीक है तो एक बार वो है क्या हां थर्ड लॉ है ना ठीक है देख समझ लीजिए ठीक है हाउ डज अ थर्मोमीटर वर्क आई डोंट नो हाउ इट वर्क बट आई नो इट्स whatever you know say so thermometer is used to measure the temperature of any suppose a, a, there is a thermometer to measure the uh, uh, like the dry bulb temperature or wet bulb temperature of a 
डोंट गो एंड ड्राई बल्ब टेम्परेचर वेट बल्ब टेम्परेचर इफ यू गो देयर ही विल आस्क यू वॉट इज ड्राई बल्ब टेम्परेचर वॉट इज वेट बल्ब टेम्परेचर फिर वो घुस जाएगा एयर कंडीशनिंग में ओके Wait, I I had written the answer. I'll send it to you. Okay. ठीक है छोड़ो मैं बता देता हूँ So thermometer works on the principle of zeroth law of thermodynamics, uh, in which the body, the first body is the this thing, the 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 temperature who's who, who's the body whose temperature is to be measured. Body B is the glass of the thermometer, and the body C. is the uh, this thing mercury okay so when we measure the temperature so then the equi thermal equilibrium is attained due to zero law of thermodynamics and uh, <coughs> since mercury has high th uh, this thing uh, coefficient of thermal expansion mercury so what happens that mercury expands when with the increase in temperature and it rises in the tube of the mercury due to capillary action against the uh, like the cap in the capillary tube there are marking the, it is calibrated against the temperature so that is how we know that it is uh, that what is the temperature okay and mercury you reach karne use karne ka reason this that it has high coefficient of uh, thermal expansion Okay. Why CP is greater than CV? Actually, that uh, Shubham also asked me this question. I'll find it. Okay. I don't know the answer. Actually. Okay, I'll tell you. Uh, CP. So CP is uh, specific heat at constant pressure. Yes. Uh, okay. And CV is so the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of the substance at uh, <coughs> of unit mass of substance huh? uh, uh, at constant pressure that is uh, that is cp and at constant volume that is cv okay so by first law of thermodynamics we know that um, uh, q is equals to change in internal energy delta u plus the work done w now in a constant volume process there is no change in volume okay so w work done that is zero so whatever heat that we supply that is used to increase the temperature of the body only delta u basically means the change in internal energy means change in the temperature of the gas which body okay, okay. but in case of uh, uh, constant specific heat uh, at constant pressure what happens there is work done also and there is change in temperature also so whatever heat that we supply that is used to increase the temperature of the body as well as do pv type of work as well so that additional energy is required in doing the work as well that is why cp is always greater than cv okay understood samajh mein aa gaya na ha tum mere ko bhej do iska answer mujhe return mein agar aayega theek hai chalega okay main dekhta hu maine kahan par likha hu main dekh ke bhejta hu And I have read somewhere that uh, CP is one point four times greater than CV. Don't know that. Yeah. अच्छा मतलब gamma gamma is equal to one point four ना? हाँ CP by CV is equal to one point four. That is for आगे यार. What is uh, what is work and its unit? Work is the measure of energy transfer when a body moves displacement d because of force f applied on it, and the SI unit of work is joule. So what is joule to our conversion? So one joule is equal to ten raised to seven ergs. Ergs, ergs, ergs. Ergs. Okay. What is hardness? It is the ability of material to resist deformation. Hmm. Plastic deformation of its surface. एक बार थोड़ा देख लेना डेफिनेशन बराबर क्या है नेट पे ठीक है ओके दिस डेफिनेशन आल्सो राइट नो व्हिच आई टोल्ड यू टोल्ड बट इट इज नॉट कंप्लीट आई फेल्ट प्लास्टिक डिफॉर्मेशन मस्ट आल्सो बी देयर इन सरफेस आल्सो बिकॉज़ हार्डनेस इज रिलेटेड टू सरफेस ओके 
ओके मेरे पास लिखा हुआ है मैं भेजता हूँ वॉट इज द कंटेंट ऑफ कार्बन इन स्टील स्टील इट इज अराउंड वॉट इज द कंटेंट ऑफ कार्बन इन कास्ट आइन इट्स बिटवीन टू टू फोर पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट वॉट आर द पार्ट्स ऑफ अ लेथ मशीन सो आई स्टार्ट फ्रॉम बॉटम टू टॉप इज इट ओके हाउ एवर यू फील कम्फर्टेबल ओके सो एट द बॉटम देर इज अ लेक दैन देर इज अ ट्रे टू कलेक्ट द चिप्स दैन देर इज अ कैरिएज एंड ऑन द कैरिएज देर इज हैंड व्हील अबाउ द कैरिएज देर इज चैटल दैन देर इज टूल पोस्ट टू होल्ड द टूल एंड देर इज हेड स्टॉक असेंबली टेल स्टॉक असेंबली there is a spindle chuck and uh, there is a pulley and gear system okay did you miss any parts one minute yeah one i left that is lead screw uh, lead screw and feed rod uh, feed box i think feed rod feed, feed rod box feed rod okay. Lead screw and fire fire rod. Check you told. Tail stock you told. Yeah, head stock assembly. Head stock, tail stock you told, na? Okay. Carriage yes. you told. Spindle you told. Okay, check tail stock. Cross slide. The saddle I told. No, nee, saddle is different and cross slide is different. Saddle is the this thing mounting on which this thing rests. Your carriage. Okay. There is one more. Uh, let me. There is compound rest. Hmm. Compound rest. Compound rest. Compound rest and tool. Yeah. What are the types of weld? Uh, what is welding and types of welding? Welding is used to join the metals uh, or joints. and the uh, types of welding are uh, there are basically three types first is the gas uh, gas welding then uh, resistance welding and arc welding and uh, in gas welding there is oxy acetylene welding pure acetylene welding and uh, uh more is there i'm not recalling it right now and in the re- resistance welding there is uh, butt welding spot welding seam welding and uh, projection welding and in the arc welding uh, there is uh, metal arc welding plasma arc welding then uh, gas gas metal arc welding and gas tungsten welding okay. this thing uh, uh, submerged submerged metal arc welding okay then um, stick welding or uh, what is it called uh, sub stick welding or one minute थर्मिट वेल्डिंग इज नॉट इन दिस दिस डिफरेंट टाइप I mentioned only three types and their subtypes. Okay, you mentioned about resistance welding, then gas welding, uh, gas and welding and arc welding. Arc welding. Okay, if you want more, that's enough, no? Ah, uh, that's enough. If you if you want more, then you can uh, tell about thermit welding and all also. Okay. okay. I'll send you one this thing. So. photo ashish had sent me i'll send it to you in that classification and all is there
what is ozone depletion potential and what are the refer uh, okay what is ozone depletion potential I don't know the proper definition, but I know how it is caused. Basically, it is caused by the harmful refrigerants like uh, NH3 or ammonia or no. some other toxic no. refrigerants. No. Ozone, basically, mm -hmm. ozone depletion takes place because of uh, this thing. Uh, chlorine, chlorine atoms are all there, na. So, okay, chlorine. Ha, yeah. Okay. That, do you see na CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons? Chlorofluorocarbons okay. and HCFCs, hydrochlorofluorocarbons. Okay. Okay. So because of that, it happens. Uh, so ozone okay. depletion potential is the ability of a gas to deplete the ozone layer as compared to the same mass of R12 refrigerant. Okay. I'll send this definition to you because this was. What are the refrigerants currently used? On board ships? It is R134A, R404A, R407A, and R410A. When, is, when it is asked, now, what are the refrigerants currently used on board? So you should start with yeah, the refrigerants used currently on board ships are mostly uh, HFCs, hydrofluorocarbons. Okay. This is because uh, they have low ozone, dip, low ozone depletion potential and global warming potential. Uh, the most commonly used refrigerant is R134A. Okay, then what is R134A? You know, Tetra. No, it's chloro CFC. No, it is. No, it is HFC. HFC. Hmm. Okay. Ah, so. Uh, R134 is tetrafluoroethane. <coughs> what is uh, CC in engine and stroke volume? CC stands for uh, cubic mass per uh, cubic capacity. Cubic capacity. Yes. What is it? So it uh, basically hmm. so it determines the uh, size of the cylinder and. Uh, is higher the CC means we say nah, that uh, this bike has this much CC. So higher the CC means higher the uh, size of cylinder and high speed. I don't know exact answer, okay. but I'll find see, it. Uh, <coughs> I'll send it to you. See, stroke volume and see stroke volume is the volume swept uh, by piston. Uh, swept by piston between TDC and VDC, okay. TDC. It is also called displacement volume or swept volume, okay. And the sum of uh, the sum of the stroke volumes of all the cylinders, okay, in an engine is called CC. Please repeat. I'll work it down. I'll 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 send the photo. What is the flywheel? Flywheel is a wheel which is uh, mounted on the one end of the crankshaft and it stores the excess amount of energy which is obtained in the power stroke and this excess energy is utilized to run the idle stroke such as suction, compression and exhaust. Difference between uh, SI and CI engine? So, SI engine works on auto cycle and CI engine works on diesel cycle. So air fuel ratio in SI engine is uh, 8 to 10. Uh, sorry, so it's between uh, 10 to 20 air fuel ratio and CI engine it is 18 to 100. And uh, compression ratio in SI engine is uh, 8 to 10 and uh, in CI engine it is uh, 18 to 20. And uh, uh, in SI engine, uh, uh, there is success. Uh, so only the uh, uh, in, uh, in SI engine, uh, the air fuel mixture is drawn into the cylinder during suction stroke, and in CI engine, only the air is drawn and compressed uh, in the cylinder. And uh, yeah, that's all. That's it. Okay. About air fuel ratio, that point you told now, I don't know about that. No, no, it's written in the, I, the diploma book. No? Okay. okay. In the, yeah. Okay. 
I have I had made one like I'll send it to you you see if you want to check out that those are some simpler okay. points okay by the time you explain me what is a two stroke and four stroke engine difference between two stroke and four stroke engine okay, in four stroke engine uh, one power stroke is obtained in uh, two revolution of crankshaft and in two stroke engine uh, one power stroke is obtained in one revolution of crankshaft and in four stroke engine uh, we use wall and wall mechanism and in uh, two stroke engine we do not have wall we have ports uh, like a uh, uh such a uh, uh, exhaust port and these cavern ports on the inlet port don't say this and, point uh, don't say this point okay because okay. in in marine diesel engines there are inlet ports or scavenge ports and exhaust valves okay yes don't say that do they don't have valves then interview will trap you here okay okay and the volume of the efficiency of uh, four stroke engine is uh, higher than as compared to two stroke engine and why we because uh, because in two four stroke in four stroke engine there is a separate stroke for the exhaust stroke na okay that is why then uh, in four stroke engine uh, there is the there is less wear and tear because uh, only there is only one stroke as um, means there is only one power stroke and uh, three strokes are just the ideal and uh, in two stroke engine uh, we require more lubrication because uh, each stroke contains of uh, consists of two strokes so high wear and tear occurs in two strokes and also requires high lubrication and uh, uh in uh, so in force of engine uh, there is a less uh, power to weight ratio as compared to two stroke okay. so uh, these are some important points now you said na power to weight ratio these are important ones these should come first okay so when okay. you are saying na okay. ekdam these questions si engine versus ci engine two stroke versus four stroke engine these are very common in questions they will ask only okay so you try to first say the important points the less wear is there less these these are not very important points first very important points are these that uh, two strokes and four strokes then one revolution of crankshaft okay and uh, one power stroke and two revolution of crankshaft that point is there then they rotate at same speed in four stroke they don't rotate at same speed that that point you didn't tell i guess yeah yeah this uh, that crankshaft and crankshaft ha uh, these are important ones that point you didn't tell then okay. then power to weight ratio which is very important point that you didn't tell that you told at the end and then you didn't tell about flywheel flywheel is important point okay means in uh, four stroke we have uh, like bigger flywheel yes i yes. i'll send you i'll send you one photo okay in two stroke also there is flywheel yeah? Yeah, in two-stroke, four-stroke, both there is flywheel, but uh, in two-stroke there is smaller flywheel. Okay. Function of piston rings. The uh, piston will uh, seal the space between the cylinder liner and the piston, and it prevents the leakage of uh, hot gases to pass from the cylinder to the crankcase. Okay, and and there are. Uh, four compression rings and one oil well, not only one function is there the, the, it dissipates heat okay then uh, yeah. it forms yeah it seals and it lubricates ah uh, lubricates it forms a uniform lubricating layer then it dissipates heat okay, okay that also and then how uh, then okay, okay. Yeah. what is the heat treatment process Uh, heat treatment is the process of heating or uh, cooling metals uh, using specific predetermined methods to obtain desired properties. Okay. Can you tell me two types of metal hardening processes and their advantages? Metal hardening process. Uh, so there is one uh, tempering and. Uh, 
नॉर्मल है जी टेम्परिंग इज नॉट अ मेटल हार्डनिंग प्रोसेस इट इज आफ्टर क्वेंचिंग वी डू टेम्परिंग टू रिलीज द स्ट्रेसेस आई हैव हर्ड दैट टेम्परिंग इज वेल टू इंक्रीज द टफनेस ऑफ मेटल हां basically reduce the stresses and increase the toughness but it is not a metal hardening process it is normally followed after quenching quenching is a metal hardening process okay okay have, have you gone through because these questions are asked what is metal hardening metal hardening processes they are advantages okay these are asked so you studied that so what are no no i'll see it now I I'll, I had made some notes. I'll send it to you. थोड़ा rough बनाया था वो अच्छे से नहीं बनाया था. ठीक है. So you see if you understand that. What is what is annealing? Annealing is a heat treatment process uh, used to reduce the hardness and to increase uh, ductility. And it is also used to do, uh, eliminate the internal stresses. Okay. Parts of centrifugal pump and its working principle working. So parts are uh, first there is a foot wall at the bottom, then there is a non-return wall, then there is suction pipe, then the suction flange, then impeller, volume casing, then impeller shaft, delivery flange, and delivery wall. So these are some basic parts of centrifugal pump. And um, centrifugal its working principle is so the centrifugal pump works on the Rotodynamic principle in which uh, the suction is created at the IF impeller, and the impeller imparts uh, centrifugal force to water, and it pushes the water from casing to the delivery pipe. Okay. Can you tell me complete working? How suction pressure is created and how discharge pressure is created in centrifugal pump? So when the uh, when the motor is started, the impeller starts to rotate. So as uh, there is a water in the suction pipe, uh, so the a vacuum is created, and uh, the water is sucked into the suction pipe, so, uh, which uh, goes towards the impeller. So as the impeller rotates, this uh, water uh, uh, starts to move. Uh, this water circulates around the impeller, and the uh, for the uh, Kinetic energy is converted into the uh, pressure energy because uh, the pump casing has a volume casing which uh, it has a gradually increase increasing area. So as we know that uh, as the area increases, uh, the velocity decreases and uh, pressure increases. So as the uh, water uh, passes through this gradually increasing area towards the discharge pipe, the uh, kinetic energy is converted into pressure energy and uh, This pressure energy is further converted into the potential energy, and which may it makes the liquid to flow towards the discharge pipe. Okay. Tell me boiler accessories. So there are uh, four boiler accessories. So I will say what is accessories. So accessories are the integral part of boiler, which are used to increase the efficiency of boiler, and they are also used for a proper from from used to uh, have a proper functioning of boiler. So there is a feed pump, super heater, economizer, and air pressure. These are some boiler accessories. List some boiler mountings. So there is a safety valve. Uh, then pressure gauge, water level indicator, air vent wall. Uh, there is a feed check wall, steam stop wall, scum wall, uh, blow off wall, and manhole. These are some boiler. Water level indicator you told? Yeah, I told. Total ten you told? Yeah. Okay. Working of a three-phase induction motor. No, I I have to take a break. 
Okay. I have to say my name. Okay. Okay, fine. ठीक है. Okay. चलेगा. ठीक है. चलेगा आमन अभी. Feedback तो थोड़ा. हाँ. Feedback तो feedback तो यही है. देखो feedback मेरा तो यही है कि तुम पढ़ तो लियो अपना वगैरह सब ठीक है. थोड़ा एक बार ये जो PDF है ना पूरा. क्योंकि लेके आये देखो मैंने भी मेरा इंटरव्यू दिया था ना मेरे इंटरव्यू के अंदर 70 टू 80 परसेंट ऑफ़ द क्वेश्चन यही पीडीएफ से आए थे और मैक्सिमम लोगों को जिनको भी क्वेश्चन पूछते हैं ना तो वही पास्ट क्वेश्चन से ही पूछते हैं ठीक है तो एक बार जितने भी क्वेश्चंस हैं ना सबको गो थ्रू कर लेना अच्छे से जितने भी क्वेश्चन है सबको गो थ्रू कर लो अच्छे से ठीक है बाकी तुम्हारा एक तो एक तो ये मेटल हार्डनिंग प्रोसेस क्या है दो वो एक देख लेना ठीक है एनीलिंग क्या है वो एक देख लेना फिर तुम्हारा थ्री फेज इंडक्शन मोटर क्या है वो देख लेना एंड देन then then what is then centrifugal pump na so how suction pressure is created that part you see once okay you, you didn't say how centrifugal pump works properly so yeah okay. discharge pressure how discharge pressure is created you told that but uh, how suction pressure is created that was not up to the mark otherwise uh, yeah it was okay, okay. and then That's most of the question last interview it was most of the most of the questions you were able to answer so no worries okay don't take too much stress you are prepared well just be confident okay and mostly these people ask basic questions only so like all this pascal's law and all everything and they have some typical questions okay prepare for that you you are good to go what what were you asking okay as compared to last interview, what was the experience? Uh, much better. Much better. Last time also you were good. This time better, better than that. Okay. I didn't ask you all those questions which were, which were asked, which I had asked last time. Mostly because I had given you the feedback on that. That is why I felt that I should ask different questions now. Okay. okay. So, VCRS and all, all those me. questions are important. I have not asked you now, but uh, because I had asked last time, that is I didn't ask now. But VCRS, all those questions are important. 